Hello everyone, and uh, let's uh, continue from where I left uh, last time uh, because of the interruption. Uh, okay, uh, I briefly look at the two uh, uh, descriptions in the well-known two encyclopedia of philosophy. And uh, one is called the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. The other one is the Internet uh, Encyclopedia of Philosophy. I think they are competitors, but it's, uh, uh, they benefit uh, our philosophers and uh, philosophy students alike, um, so it's good. But when I read them briefly, I'm, I must say that I'm happy with what they wrote down. And uh, I feel somehow they don't quite uh, know Hegel either. So that uh, uh, verified my belief, or a lot of people believe, that uh, Hegel is really hard for a lot of people quite a few people to understand. Uh, for the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, it's uh, said it's peer-reviewed. That means professors or doctors, they re re review each other's work to make sure it's, uh, it's met some, it's met some uh, in academic a standard, and uh, that's uh, the, the purpose. Uh, I remember at the beginning of the description of Hegel under the name of Hegel, he, uh, he said something like Hegel claims that his system, that is Hegel's system, is accumulation of all the past uh, philosophy achievements in history. I think it's a uh, very well uh, described or it's true uh, to the content, to the uh, truth. Uh, I, uh, I think it's a very good way to start, but uh, unfortunately, and the writer started uh, immediately to philosophy of right, and uh, saying uh, he will emphasize the philosophy of right, and uh, it's an, not anything else. And uh, we know uh, Hegel's philosophy of right is not his uh, most important or essential work. And uh, it's, uh, we can say it's one of the three, but it's not the most important one, and the, the logic uh, should be, and the, to a lesser extent, the phenomenology of spirit should be the second one. That is, uh, when Hegel was young, he wrote the uh, phenomenology of spirit as a, a precursor to later his encyclopedia of philosophy. We know that. And uh, the other one uh, in the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, if you look at the, under the name of Hegel, you can see the writer summarize a lot of uh, uh, people's ideas or thinking about what Hegel says and uh, gave you pretty wide a range of uh, what the current understanding and uh, also historically in the recent past, I mean, uh, interpretation of Hegel. Uh, but the, the problem is the writer himself uh, didn't show his knowledge of Hegel. He sort of persuaded by each side and didn't have his own idea about Hegel. And I Feel, my feeling is that he doesn't understand Hegel either. And uh, from the way he described uh, Hegel's logic, Hegel's phenomenology of spirit, I can see that. 
uh, he did mention uh, both of them mm, in his writing, but uh, the problem is he didn't see the significance there either. So that's uh, my feeling about it. Mm, maybe one day I will attempt to write something on uh, on Hegel to uh, make it up for this part. And uh, hopefully I can convince people what Hegel says and uh, to make people understand Hegel better. All right. What's a difficulty and what's a so obscure or so uh, dark here on Hegel's uh, ideas or Hegel's writings? Uh, uh, my feeling is its uh, language is on the one hand, it's uh, very obscure, it's uh, 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 not straightforward, it's like uh, uh, cotton balls, it's a uh, woolly stuff, it's uh, going around and around, that's one part. But another part, I think probably more important, is Hegel's ideas. His ideas are very hard to grasp for a lot of people. I think probably that's the major reason rather than language to understand Hegel. And uh, many people, when they read Hegel, they got the uh, so-called dialectic of the trio, the thesis, the antithesis, and the synthesis, three parts. Uh, just go by uh, that uh, trio uh, all the way, uh, whatever, uh, expanding um, the uh, Hegel's logic or system. And uh, uh, in fact, Hegel did do it that way in his logic. And somebody counted that Hegel has roughly 270 categories expanding under the three uh, subtitles uh, like uh, uh, being and uh, essence and the concept uh, of being nature and the concept uh, in the logic. Uh, but we cannot only only look at the surface how he uh, expand his uh, uh, right uh, structure of the book. We should understand, uh, in my opinion, uh, what the behind it, what the truth in his uh, thinking on this part, on the logic, he called the logic, all right? And uh, last time when I mentioned uh, language is one of the forms of thought. And uh, uh, that's from the, my understanding uh, from the instinctology and the eschatology. So uh, it's like uh, images and, uh, or uh, symbols are also forms of thought. And we know when Kurt Goodell uh, did the proof of the theorem, incomplete theorems. He used some Gödel numbers uh, to uh, complete the task. Uh, by that, we, uh, if you use a language, it's obviously cannot do that. But by numbering regression, by the use of regression, he did it successfully. So. You can see language can be a problem. It's uh, like in the computer language too, you know. Uh, in computer we have assembly language, it's just one and zero. It's a binary uh, thing and uh, the language obviously cannot be that efficient. And uh, we have uh, different uh, systems, uh, but it can translate it into different systems, of course like uh, decimals or uh, other systems too, and uh, that, that, that's a, a side. Okay, uh, as for Hegel, I think 
the we need to know the a lot of things on him and uh, I believe when you read Hegel it's uh, reading original and reading the summary or uh, listening or reading from other people's uh, summary it, it, it can be uh, different but sometimes it's not the uh, a deciding or it's a uh, it's a crucial uh, factor in understanding Hegel because according to him uh, familiarity with one thing doesn't guarantee genuine knowledge of it that means you can read Hegel several times you uh, original texts, uh, but you still probably cannot understand him. So that's his uh, idea. In other words, uh, sometimes you, without knowing every detail, you uh, probably can feel you understand some writers. I think uh, that kind of uh, in that kind of situation, it's called the logical leak. So important thing here I want to stress is when we read somebody, we need to understand the structure or the logical link. Uh, the previous one connect to the uh, later one. And in that way, we can know uh, what the writer or his ideas are. And without even knowing every details, of uh, his saying, you know, sometimes for even for philosophers, uh, the big guy like Hegel, he cannot guarantee every thought or every idea he put forward is exactly in line with uh, his uh, uh, system or logic, like a uh, Kant, you know. Uh, Kant is a systematic philosopher, but he had some weird ideas, and uh, we know. And uh, let's say he, uh, in his ethics, he's strongly against uh, touching the private part. He says never do that. It's uh, now uh, if if he says that, we feel it's ridiculous. Uh, why it's a forbidden area like that? He mentioned it specifically, you know. So. We, we cannot blame philosophers for every detailed thing. We have to grasp the general ideas, the entire system, and uh, the sequence of ideas as a whole. That's my point. All right? So we have to distinguish the essence from attributes. We have to distinguish the major points from some uh, auxiliary or attributes. That that's the idea. And uh, Hegel's idea, the entire thing, uh, entire system. Actually, we cannot uh, just separate them from historical uh, development. And uh, as recent, as close as to from German's idealist tradition, uh, a Kant's system, uh, Fichte's system, or Schelling's system, uh, actually we can see the shadows of Hegel's work in his first major uh, book, The Phenomenology of Spirit. Uh, many ideas Hegel ex uh, Pounded in his book, in the phenomenology of spirit, and also the sequence of develop, development. Uh, from that, you can see the shadow of fish and the shell. For example, um, uh, fish uh, stress the self, the knowledge, uh, the science of knowledge the absolute self, 
That's basically will give Hegel the idea of logic. Later, he put into the first part well, of his the science of logic, and uh, Schelling's idea of nature and uh, identity of uh, consciousness with reality, and uh, that was put uh, in the phenomenology uh, second part, and also in the logic, the second part of nature. Uh, actually, uh, Fichte already mentioned the three steps, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis in his work. So it's not Hegel's idea, him, his own idea of the trio uh, development the thesis, antithesis, and the synthesis uh, trio uh, formula here. It's, it, he, he, he inherited uh, from previous uh, writers like Fist and Shelley, uh, that's for sure. Uh, so, but what important is Hegel's own ideas, uh, you I feel probably uh, his major contribution is elevating reason to the height of supreme. And uh, the idea uh, to the height of a supreme, he called it absolute idea. But the most important of all is to, he put a system. He formed a system of all the major points other philosopher, philosophers had uh, advanced. So when you put something into a system, it's much more stronger and powerful than any other uh, individual uh, putting forward and raised in history. I think that is the most important thing. And uh, as to Hegel himself, he is a well versed in Greek philosophy, in, in uh, a lot of other uh, ancient uh, Greek writings, and he so he is a quite he he gets the best of uh, almost everybody. We can see that, and uh, his system is so uh, vast and so. Uh, so big. A, a lot, I think it's even for like people like a, a Karl Marx uh, didn't quite understand him either. And because uh, from my reading, I put into my book, uh, Karl Marx's thesis uh, of uh, for the doctor of philosophy is about about uh, the atomist. Uh, idea, uh, Democritus and Epi Epicureanism. Uh, so he doesn't understand the the abstract part like Plato's idea. So he is a sort of on the side of Aristotle uh, from this aspect. I can see that. So when he said he put uh, he want to upside down Hegel system the so-called uh, reasonable uh, inner core, he is really doesn't know what he is saying. That's uh, ob very obvious to me. And uh, that's uh, something I just uh, uh, happened to, to mention it here. And uh, related to history, I should say Hegel's uh, first important philosopher Hegel inherited is Parmenides' idea. Parmenides' idea, thought is the world. That idea Hegel inherited. That is a very, very important idea. And if you read Parmenides' uh, uh, on element, you know what Parmenides means. And uh, it's not very long. And, uh, and the Parmenides' idea it's uh, it's obscure to a lot of people already. How can thoughts are the world? How can we know world? 
through our thoughts. If you understand that relationship, you will understand Hegel a lot. Another person, another philosopher, is Pythagoras' idea. Pythagoras' idea is mathematics is the world. Think about that. Actually, it shows Hegel the world is a law. Mathematics are laws. The world a law. Laws are logics, right? So that's a very important thing for Hegel to expand from this point. We should see the link here. And a third person I want to mention is Heraclitus. Heraclitus movement of the world. You cannot step into the same river twice. It's very important for Hegel. From the movement, it gave Hegel's idea of the concept which is moving all the time. So that movement of the world is very important. He developed into uh, he put some uh, dialectic he called uh, into it to make it moving all the time. That's very important. Uh, next one, of course, is Socrates. Socrates' dialectic is entirely different from Hegel's dialectic. But Hegel uh, just used this word. He made uh, Socrates' uh, inquisitiveness, the uh, questioning, uh, the, find, the way to find the contradiction in uh, opponent's logic was well adopted by Hegel, but he changed it into the uh, thesis, antithesis, and uh, uh, synthesis. So that's his um, uh, very uh, innovative, or maybe he, he, of course, he take, I, as I said before, he learned from uh, Fichte, and he also systematically expanded it. So that, that's what Hegel did. And uh, after uh, uh, Socrates is Plato. Plato's idea of forms is the basis of logic, the first part of being. And uh, the form idea is the essence of the logic of being, the first part of the logic, Hegel's uh, the science of logic. And uh, of course, next is uh, Aristotle. Aristotle's uh, idea of teleological development, that's a crucial part for the idea of Hegel's concept, absolute concept, or absolute reason, or absolute idea to move forward. And uh, that idea, I think, is from uh, Aristotle. But that is very important. When I read, here I add something extra, uh, the uh, writer in Stanford, uh, Encyclopedia of Philosophy, under the name of Hegel, I can see he attributes Hegel's uh, saying of God as uh, theological, as religious, as something uh, Kant, Emil, Emmanuel Kant already criticized. Actually, I think it's not fair to Hegel. As philosophers, when we say uh, God, we normally just use, use God as a starting point, as in religion. Now, we are philosophy philosophers we don't go uh, just by belief and jump to God to push everything to God that's a difference from uh, religious uh, a priest or and a philosopher so I think that's unfair to Hegel obviously and uh, also because if you don't understand Hegel's point you think he is his uh, his teaching or his his reasoning is a theological. That's not right. It's not like that. And that's uh, too much to, to put him to the religious uh, side. Okay?
And um, I want to say uh, this. When you understand uh, the, a philosophy or a philosopher's work, how, what's a standard or what's a test of it? You have to see, to my mind, you have to see the connection. The philosophy of philosophers before him and the philosophy of philosophers work after him. And you can link them together. I think that's a way uh, you can say you understand this philosophy. And if you don't see that, it's you really can hardly say you understand the connection, uh, 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 some philosophy. I think that's the way it is. Let's say for Immanuel Kant, what's a logical link that can be expanded? And Kant himself, he raised it, but didn't expand or didn't say it well. Didn't have time or have uh, detailed work on that and left there unfinished for other people uh, leave room uh, for other people to develop to develop I think one of the it is the the luminan uh, phenomena uh, the, the luminan okay that one uh, Kant himself didn't quite expand uh, explain what it is or how it should be like that. He just briefly mentioned that that is the limit of knowledge, of reason, of uh, rationale, okay? That is, uh, we cannot go beyond it. That's a boundary. He just said that, nothing else. But actually, he has a lot of problem here. So Hegel, in a way, expanded this part and uh, make the his system uh, solving uh, uh, Kant uh, Numina uh, stuff. Okay, so here is it is uh, it's a logical development. We can see that. Similarly, if you see other uh, logical room or uh, development in Hegel system, it must be something Hegel raised but didn't expand it. Uh, in detail or far enough for other people uh, to see it, to understand him, then to expand it. it. It must be something like that. All right, that's my feeling. Uh, so, as I said, uh, starting from Kant, Fichte, and Schelling, we can see Hegel himself actually didn't raise. Uh, uh, many novel ideas, uh, 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 except I mentioned the forming of his system and the elevating of reason and the elevating of the ideas. You can see actually many ideas are from other philosophers before him. He just put them into a system. So. It, his system looks a a gigantic, but actually a lot of ideas are from other people. In the two descriptions, in either in the Internet uh, Encyclopedia of Philosophy or Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, from the two writings under name of Hegel, none of them mentioned from the all, uh, writers' own point of view of the relationship of Hegel's work with the past history. I don't think that the writer for uh, both of them, uh, none of them uh, can see the link between there. So that's uh, make me feel that they don't quite understand Hegel's work. And that's why I say that. Okay, so, uh, I think Hegel's importance here, the most, to me, uh, most important idea is uh, uh, he expanded Aristotle's idea of teleological development. And he also make it move forward, advance, 
of course, she used in history, in uh, society, in civilization. That's another matter. But the core here, the core of his system is in logic. Okay? The logic, the movement of logic, first in itself, in a potential form, and then move to the nature uh, to expand, to show itself. Uh, it's, it's all uh, kind of a movement, a kind of a advancement that is towards a circle, going a circle uh, upwards. And that idea is a very important um, to me. I think the Hegel's idea, when I have the system of instantology and absolutology, when I develop this system, I realize that Hegel's system is just a small circle inside the uh, a lower uh, level of reality and the thought and ideas. But in my instantology and absolutology, they are already developed into the uh, micro world and the macro world, into the different categories and the different relationships. Uh, the absolute, Hegel's absolute or Fisht absolute uh, absolute self, or uh, Schelling's absolute nature, or Hegel's absolute idea, they all become uh, relative absolute in the macro world. So that's a, it's a sort of a subsumed uh, put under the, uh, my system of instantology and absolutology. If you understand my system, when you turn back to look at Hegel's, you see that picture, that logical link is very clear. And that's uh, what I just want to add to this part. So uh, as a summary, I want to say that Hegel's difficulty is not in the language. Language-wise, language I feel German philosophers uh, tend to say more than necessary. Sometimes that's they didn't say it or try to help a reader to understand their system. Uh, they sort of, um, I don't know why. Uh, I have the feeling, I feel, that, let's say you can say straightforward, but they don't do it that way. And uh, uh, But the important thing is they did have great stuff in it. It's a great value. Without them, uh, I don't think uh, my instantology and absolutology can advance to uh, this stage. And uh, I somehow uh, was influenced by all past philosophies. And, uh, but when I uh, turn back, when I finish the whole system, turn back to look at the, them, I see everywhere it's their footsteps. Their, uh, theory, their ideas. I can see everything there. But it's not, on the other hand, it's not quite the same as in my system. But I do feel it's like standing on the shoulders of the giants. Without them, I must say, I cannot have my ideas. I cannot have my systems. I'm sure it is true on that. All right, I just uh, thinking something, I put it here. I hope it can add to uh, understanding of Hegel, because I hope when people understand Hegel, it will move on uh, to my system of instantology and absolutology. And uh, uh, if they still have problems, I can uh, explain to my best. But I feel that uh, I I understand what Hegel means here. And uh, even more, uh, down the road, uh, you have to understand Heidegger. You have to understand Wittgenstein. You have to understand Husserl. Otherwise, you still cannot understand my instantology and absolutology. I'm sure of that. 
but Hegel is a mountain. If you pass Hegel, everything uh, will be a downhill. It will be, you will feel much easier and better to sail from there, all right? Okay, hopefully that will, uh, what I said will help. Uh, okay, that's uh, for today. Thank you very much.